Postman Pat paints the ceiling. Here he comes. It's Pat, on his way with the letters, buzzing about Greendale as busy as ever. There are some letters for Granny Dryden today. As Pat comes up the garden path, he can see some pots of paint on her windowsill. Looks as though someone's busy doing a spot of painting, says Pat. Morning, Granny Dryden. There was Granny Dryden, standing on a box, sploshing at the wall with the paint. You're making a grand job of that, said Pat. It's going to look lovely when you've finished. Nay, Pat, said Granny Dryden. I'll not be able to make a right job of it. That ceiling wants doing, and I'll never reach that in all my days. Would you like a hand with it, said Pat. I could borrow some ladders and planks from Ted. I'll pop round after work and do that ceiling for you in two ticks. You might need a drop more paint. Let's have a look. How much is there in this one? I think it's empty. Pat tipped one of the paint pots upside down and gave it a shake. Do be careful, said Granny Dryden. It's messy stuff. Oh, said Pat. A slop of paint came glooping out and went all down Pat's trousers. Now you've gone and done it, said Granny Dryden. All down your nice clean trousers. See if you can wipe it off before it soaks in. She gave him a piece of rag to wipe it with. I think it's just making it worse, and it's only spreading it out, said Pat. Oh, I am sorry about your trousers, said Granny Dryden. What is Sarah going to say? Never you mind about that. It was my own fault, said Pat. I should take more care. I expect that's what Sarah will say. I'll nip home and change. These are not my best pair, luckily, and I'll put a pair of old jeans on to paint the ceiling. Oh, you are kind, Pat, said Granny Dryden. Now, mind how you go. Pat was on his way. It didn't take long to get home. Sarah did get a surprise when she saw him. What are you doing back at this time of day? she said. And what on earth have you done to your trousers? It's only a drop of paint. You see, he told her about Granny Dryden's ceiling. Well, you can't put your best pair of trousers on for work, said Sarah. I took them to the cleaners in Greendale yesterday, and they won't be ready until Thursday. What am I going to do? said Pat. You could look in the airing cupboard, said Sarah. I think there's that old pair that you do the gardening in. They'll be better than nothing, said Pat. I'll have a look. When Sarah saw Pat coming down the stairs in his old trousers, she couldn't help laughing. He had found a pair of trousers he once wore on holiday, long ago. They didn't fit very well. Are they long shorts or short longs? She said. Nay, they'll do, won't they? Said Pat. I can't hang about any longer with all these letters to deliver. He was soon on his way again, with rather chilly knees. Jess didn't know what to make of Pat's bare knees. He thought summer must have arrived early. They called on Miss Hubbard next. She was gathering some flowers for the church. She nearly dropped all her flowers when she saw Pat. Oh, goodness me, Pat, she said. What are you doing in shorts? It's not summer yet. Cast not a cloud till maybe out. They're not shorts, Miss Hubbard. They're an old pair of trousers. It's Granny Dryden, you see. She's painting her room and she can't reach the ceiling and... I don't believe a word of it, laughed Miss Hubbard. It's that post office. They're going all continental. Something to do with this common market. The swinging postman image. I know all about that. Did you say Granny Dryden was painting? Do you mean a picture? No, she's painting her sitting room, said Pat. And I'm going to give her a hand with the ceiling. Well, I don't know what that's got to do with wearing Bermuda shorts, said Miss Hubbard. It's a funny old world, but what she will need is plenty of sheets to cover the furniture. Oh, I don't think she's got many. I didn't see any, said Pat. She'll certainly need some sheets if you're going to help her, said Miss Hubbard. I've seen what a man can do with a pot of paint. I have plenty of old sheets. I'll just get some out of the cupboard for you. When Miss Hubbard came out with the sheets, the wind took hold of them and whirled them about, wrapping them around her. She whooshed and billowed into the garden. Help! A ghost! shouted Pat. 
Is that you, Miss Hubbard? A muffled voice came out of the bundle of sheets. Don't just stand there. Get me out of this. Catch hold of that corner and pull. Oh, Pat, be careful. There goes my hat. What a struggle. Pat had to distangle her. The wind had wrapped her up like a mummy. When Pat set her free, at last, Miss Hubbard gasped. There you are, Pat. Pop these sheets in your van and let's have no more ghosts. Pat was on his way again. There was a cold breeze blowing, so he wrapped a sheet round his legs to keep his knees warm. He called at Ted Glenn's workshop. There was no sign of Ted. Hello, Ted, shouted Pat. Where are you? Post. Pat peered through the window. The workshop was empty. Where has he got to? Ted was in the garden getting his spring carrots in when he heard somebody bumping about in his workshop. He'd thought he'd better go and have a look. You never know, it might be a burglar. Ted crept very quietly round to the door and bumped into Pat coming out. Stop! shouted Ted, grabbing Pat. Oh, help, Ted, said Pat. It's me. Sorry, Pat, I thought you were a burglar, said Ted. A house painter more like, said Pat. I've promised to give Granny Dryden a hand with her ceiling. Do you think I can borrow some ladders? I'll do better than that, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Are you doing it before you go on holiday? I'm not going on holiday, Ted. I just thought you were wearing the gear, Ted laughed. These snazzy shorts, very smart. I'll meet you at Granny Dryden's tonight with the ladders at seven o'clock. Righty-o, thanks a lot, Ted. Cheerio. Pat was off again, to Thompson Ground. Dorothy was tidying up the yard. When she saw Pat, she said, Oh, it's Pat. I wonder what he's brought today. Lots of letters today, Dorothy, said Pat, and it's a right busy day, a touch of spring in the air, what with you getting all tidied up and Granny Dryden painting her room. I hope she has plenty of paint, said Dorothy. It always takes twice as much as you think it's going to need. Well, she might be a bit short, said Pat, like your trousers. Well, now, that's another story. We have plenty of pots in the barn, Dorothy said. We always keep a good store, always painting something we are. I'm sure we can spare a drop for Granny Dryden. Just keep a lookout for our silly hens. They get everywhere. Pat went into the barn to look for the pots of paint. It was very gloomy, and he kept bumping into things. Hey up, ouch! It's a bit dark in here. Try that shelf over there, said Dorothy. Pat got hold of a sleepy hen by mistake. It clucked loudly and flapped its wings. Oh, help! A flying paint pot! It's a new kind! Eggshell finish! laughed Dorothy. I'll wait outside till you've done. I can do with an eggshell finish on me. When Pat came out of the barn, he looked really funny. He had feathers all over him and bits of straw in his hair. Dorothy couldn't help laughing. It was a busy scene at Granny Dryden's cottage that evening. Ted and Pat rigged up the ladders and soon got to work painting the ceiling. Well, we'll soon be done. It'll be just like new, said Ted. I think I've about done my bit, said Pat. It looks really lovely, said Ted. And I have a surprise for you, said Granny Dryden as she came in with a tray of tea. She gazed at her new ceiling. Oh, it's lovely. It really is. I could never have done it on my own. You are kind. Here, look at this, said Ted. I found another pot of paint. Give it a good stir before it sets hard, said Pat. What a surprise Ted had when he tried to take the lid off. Nay, it isn't a pot of paint at all. It's a cake. A surprise, said Granny Dryden, just to say thank you to you both. Now that's the best pot of paint I ever saw, said Pat. And it's one you can't spill down your trousers, said Granny Dryden. Then they all had a large slice of cake and a good drink of tea. When they had packed up the ladders and folded the sheets and cleaned up the paint drips, Ted and Pat went home. Granny Dryden had another cup of tea and smiled as she looked at her nice new ceiling. It had never looked so good in all her days.